Uh, Derek, obviously, on you know, if you go back to September 10th, 2001, it, it was very the information sharing was almost non-existent because of the wall between the FBI yeah. and the CIA. So we have now have the National Counterterrorism Center. We have you know many many joint terrorism task forces. I mean, how would you assess you know the last decade and a half plus in terms of because you're right, obviously certain individuals can always get in the way, but there are these institutional institutional barriers. Oh, so it's a great question. Uh, so I assess it as it's gotten a lot better. On the crime side, the cooperation is a hell of a lot better than it was prior to 9/11. All right, uh, we have good cooperation. It's not perfect because again, it's individual, yeah. right? But for the most part, it's pretty good. Wherever you cross into the terrorism realm, it's a disaster because because of the terrorist investigators think that what they're doing is so damn important. But mm -hmm. they don't realize, yeah, it's important, but the way to get them is get them on the crime. Al Capone was taken down on a damn IRS violation. He was a mass murderer. It's the same thing. So when the Russians gave information to the FBI JTTF on Tamlin. Saniev. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Okay, just Tamlin is going to radicalize and do all this stuff. You know that in that JTTF up there, they didn't share this information. They did a series of things, one, two, three, four, five. They knock on the door. Tamlin, hey, you a terrorist? No, sir, I'm a great citizen. Have a nice day. Case closed. Hmm. After the bomb, my center got bombarded with information to see if we had any information. Sure enough, we had 14 contacts directly to a cell phone that was in the hands of Tamlin and or his sister because they were involved with drugs. So what should have happened is in 2011, uh, when the information came up on Tamlin, the JTTF partner agency reps should have investigated in their systems what they had on Tamlin, and then the FBI should have said, all right, DEA, Homeland Security, you go investigate this guy, see if you can get him on some criminal stuff because obviously we don't have anything on the terror side. Never happened. 9-11, 2011, 10-year anniversary of 9-11, there were three kids mutilated up in um, Waltham, Massachusetts. Three dead kids with marijuana sprinkled on their bodies. And it was a horrific crime scene. One of the kids in there was a target of a DEA Homeland Security investigation, wiretap investigation up in Boston because he was getting a lot of marijuana from the, uh, from the cell in Boston. The other kid in the house was Brendan Mess, Tamlin's best friend from the gym. The witness told the cops, you need to talk to this guy, Brendan, uh, this guy Tamlin. His best friend is in the apartment murdered. The other guy was a drug trafficker. If the DEA and Homeland Security would have had this information in 2011, we could have investigated the drug trafficking aspect and probably would have recognized what they were doing on the drug side. So the walls are horrible. 2010, Preet Bharara, this very outgoing U.S. attorney from New York, um, Preet, in 2010, took the walls down between drugs and terrorism in his U.S. attorney's office because he recognized I needed the best and brightest prosecutors to go after the biggest threats in the world and don't really care what it is. Hmm. That's the kind of leadership you need in this country and in other countries. You have to get the best and brightest working together to go after the biggest threats.